Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Vivian. And this is Burger of the Week. Each week, we discuss an episode of the Fox animated series Bob's Burgers, and then we create a themed burger based on that episode. This week, we're talking about Season 2, Episode 6, Dr. Yap. This episode was written by Stephen Davis and Kelvin Yu, and was directed by Anthony Chun, and it aired April 29th, 2012. The store next door was Stickers for Men. Okay, I kind of love that because of all the stupid gender bullshit that we get in this episode... It's kind of perfect to have a store that's like, no, 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 stickers just for dudes, though. Just for guys. Super manly stickers. Don't worry, no one's gonna, like, question your masculinity. No kids allowed. No kids allowed. No ladies. Mm Mm-mm, these aren't girly stickers. No way. These are stickers for men. For men. Manly men. Manly (laughs) friggin' men. (laughs) The exterminator van was Wicked Witch of the Pest. That's cute. I really like that one, actually. Yeah, it's good. And we only had one burger of the day, and it was It's Fun to Eat at the Rye MCA, which comes on rye with mustard, cheese, and avocado. Okay, that's cute. Yeah, it's clever. Rye MCA. They have an easier job of choosing their burgers. They don't have to make it relate to the episode. I know. We're really the ones doing the work here. We're doing a lot more work than these writers. So so much work. So much work. We have some new cast members this episode. We do. We do. A familiar face for people who watch Community. So we have Ken Jeong as Dr. Yap and Rob Hubel as the Prince of Persuasia. Now, I didn't know his name, but if you look him up on IMDb, I'm like, oh, it's that guy. <laughs> what else is <laughs> he He's in just in? like a bunch of stuff. He's just kind of minor roles in a ton of stuff, but yeah, definitely a recognizable face. All right, let's get started. Bob visits the dentist, Dr. Yap, for a filling. Linda's sister, Gail, drops by for a visit without any notice. Dr. Yap tells Bob about his graduation medallion from the Prince of Persuasia in the art of picking up women. So I love this episode because how ridiculous the Prince of Persuasia is. Like, it's such a... You watch it and you're just like, wow, that's such a stupid concept. And then you realize that that actually exists. Yeah. And there are books about it. Ew, there's books about it? Oh, yeah. That's disgusting. So there's actually a book called The Game, which is about penetrating the secret society of pickup artists. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, and there's there's plenty more. It's just, I don't know, guys who have no confidence and need to learn strategies to pick up girls and think that the secrets lie within insulting women and trapping them and... Emotional abuse. Let's right. just call it out for right. what it is. So not, not being yourself <laughs> when you go to talk to a woman. Yeah, because these are the guys who think, who think that only jerks get women, mm-hmm. right? Or that women only like jerks. So they figure, hey, I should be a real dick. And maybe a woman will like me. And that'll create a very strong and reliable relationship that'll go on for years. Okay, yeah. I don't think they care about relationships. <laughs> I think they care about getting in their pants. Right. So anyway. Or having someone, like, obsessed with them or basically, like, owning somebody. Mm. It's disgusting. It's kind of hilarious. The representation in this episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, the representation in this episode is so obviously terrible mm-hmm. that it's funny. It just sucks that that's something that real men out there think is a good idea. Yes. Yeah. If anybody is listening that thinks that girls like this kind of thing. You're super wrong and please get help. (laughs) (laughs) You know, being yourself is always great. Yeah. Because if a girl doesn't like you for who you are, then they don't deserve you. Yes. And also women deserve to be treated with respect and kindness. Sure. That too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Moving right along. Moving on. I do get Bob, though, in this moment. Like, I feel for him because I hate going to the dentist. I just hate it. It sucks. It's no fun, and it gives me such insane anxiety that, like, I just want to have panic attacks when I think about it. But if I get laughing gas, it's so much easier because then I'm like, oh, I'm not going to really be present 
for this experience. So mm-hmm. it's going to be fine. I still get like a little nervous, but it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be as bad as Bob freaking out in this episode. So I've never had the dentist anxiety experience because growing up, we never had a dentist. Mm. We, it was just me and my mother and we couldn't exactly afford a dentist. And so we just followed the good old brushing rules and hoped that I didn't get any impacted molars or cavities that ruined my mouth. And yeah. You did fairly well. Fairly well. Yeah. Yeah. I got a a few crooked bad boys up in there, but uh, (laughs) nothing that I really... Gives you personality, huh? Sure. Yeah. That. (laughs) But I never grew up to be terrified of drills or the sounds or people poking and prodding. I mean, the first time I really remember going to a dentist was... I don't know, what, eight months ago? Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, okay. to go in and get a chipped tooth fixed, and then they just pulled it. Well, wasn't it one of your molar? No, it wasn't a molar. It was a... It was a molar. No, it was one of your wisdom teeth, wasn't it? Isn't that a molar? No. Wisdom yes, teeth are, was... like, further back than that. Yeah, it yeah. It was a wisdom tooth. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Right. Which should be gone anyway, right? Yeah, so no loss there. But luckily, none of mine impacted. I have... Two left. One of them never grew in. Mm. I had four. I got them all removed. It sucked. Mm -hmm. It hurt. (laughs) Afterwards. Not during. During I was completely out. Did they have to uh, like do surgery and give you stitches and all that? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I didn't get that. Just because it was fully grown out. So they just had to pull it. They didn't have to dig into the gums. Mm -hmm. Mine were not grown out. They were just starting to peek out like a tiny little bit. And uh, I got them done the day after I graduated high school. Not exactly the way I wanted to celebrate. (laughs) Eh. Oh, well. well. Now, I know that you don't have that much experience with dentists, but what the hell are those white things that Dr. Yap puts in Bob's mouth? Because I have never seen those in my life. It looks like the stuff that that they give you after you come out of the dentist to absorb blood. Yeah, but they usually give you gauze. Right, and that's... It almost also kind of looked like it was supposed to suck up the moisture in his mouth but i thought they had a suction thing for that they do so i don't know yeah it's super weird because it kept looking like dr yap was shoving packing peanuts into bob's (laughs) mouth and i was like what are you doing (laughs) you're a terrible dentist which maybe he is because it's not like bob and linda would be able to afford a really high-end dentist right he might be a little on the shady side it's possible. I mean, it yeah. looks legit. It looks like he's got a receptionist and hygienist and a nice yeah. waiting room. And he's probably an okay guy. Yeah. Okay. Not okay great. Okay at his job. Yeah. Yeah. Just okay. World's okayest dentist. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that comes with world's okayest prices. Yeah. Another weird thing in this episode is that it implies that Gail doesn't live in town, which we know... That later on in the series isn't true. Like, she lives in the same city. Mm -hmm. And we start to see her more often. But at this point, I guess what they were going for was that she still lived in a different town. And then we don't... That's the reason we don't see her that often. Right. I never really thought of it that. Because she came by with stuff. With, like, suitcase and luggage. Mm -hmm. And she wouldn't do that if she lived, like, for example, around the corner. Yeah. And it wouldn't be a surprise for her stopping by that unexpected because she lives in town mm-hmm. yeah and linda makes this whole big deal about oh you're visiting without any notice at all okay who does that that's weird just you <laughs> so yeah they do change that and I'm, gl- I'm glad they do because it opens up more story opportunities for gail mm-hmm. and we get the beginning of the kids story when gail comes and has that jawbreaker i really like this storyline for the kids really yeah Okay. Because it gives them something to do that is childlike and childish and innocent and ridiculous. Very true. But something that I definitely did as a kid. Ugh. It's so gross, though. I don't know. The whole thing just... I know it's childish, but it just makes me want to, like, gag. It's What? Very the disgusting. idea of the jawbreaker or the contests? Well, a lot of the contests are disgusting. But also, the idea of sharing this jawbreaker... With your sibling? I never shared stuff like that with my brother. That's just gross. 
Once it's in your mouth, it's yours. <laughs> I'm very much the you licked it, it's yours mm-hmm. person. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. And I just keep thinking of how like dirty it's getting through all of these different challenges and ugh. And the drinks that they create are so disgusting that I actually feel a little bit sick watching them put them together. Did you never make gross concoctions like that? Oh, yeah, but I never drank them. What I used to do at a restaurant, and this is terrible, and I apologize retroactively to all the waitresses, (laughs) but when I used to be, like, finished my food, and usually there was still, like, little pieces of everything on my plate, I used to put, like, an obscene amount of pepper and salt and, like, whatever condiments I could get and, like, mash it up together and make it as gross as I possibly could. But then I wouldn't eat it. I just wanted to see what it would look like Mm -hmm. as a kid. Oh, yeah, I did that too. So it's fine in a way that they're making these things, but then as soon as it becomes something that Tina actually has to drink, then it's really gross. Really, really gross. Yeah. So I have... um... I have memories of doing that, but we would, me and a friend would come up with, we'd grab anything in the cupboards and whatever we could find, we'd put it all in a drink and try and get my mom or somebody else to drink it. Oh my God, that is so cruel. (laughs) It's so mean. But as a kid, you're so bad at like, oh mom, do you want some water? Sure. Let me just go get it for you. And then you come back with like this sludge. And then you're kind of giggling to yourself, like, (laughs) she'll never know. And it's this, it's in a glass. You can tell that it's not water. (laughs) It's like this brown gunk. It just smells like burnt garbage. And (laughs) And then as a kid, you're kind of, I'm just kind of like giggling, like, (laughs) I'm going to get her her so good. (laughs) And I had similar moments where. I'd say, oh, do you want some water? And then she'd say yes. And I'd come back with hot water. Oh, my God. I'd put on the hot water tap and I'd say, here you go. And then, of course, as soon as she holds the glass, <laughs> she knows it's hot. It's like, <laughs> past Jason, what were you thinking? You're not clever. <laughs> See, if our kid, which we don't have right now, but if our future child ever tries to do this to me, I'm going to be like... Why don't you take a sip first and see what they do? And then they'll just be like, oh, I'm not thirsty right now, but thanks, maybe later. Or they'll be smart and they'll have their own, but it's like just... And they'll be like, oh, I'm just having some. It's delicious here. You like Diet Pepsi, so it's already black, so you never know. Oh, man. You're never going to trust anything they give you. Hey, hey, hey. Can't trust my own children. Mm -mm. So, Jean... The first contest they have is a hugging contest. And Gene grabs Louise and squeezes her and he says, I love you, I love you, I love you. That's really cute. It is super cute. And then he does some really nice things later on in the episode as well. When he's testing out the soundproof room in Dr. Yap's ski resort lodge, his ski trap closes the door and says, I love my family. Oh, it's so cute. So Gene, this episode is really sweet. Yeah, he is. He might be gross, but at least he's loving. He's very loving. Gail and the kids pick up Bob from the dentist. Bob is so loopy from the drugs that he mistakes Gail for Linda, and he makes frequent advances on her. Gail thinks they're dating now, and Linda encourages Bob to pretend. Ew. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that was a collective... (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's just that, that shake that you get from... Being completely grossed out. Yep. And you pointed out to me a couple days ago, actually, that Dr. Yap negs Gail right away. He does. Dr. Yap shows Bob that there's three steps to getting a woman, basically. Mm -hmm. The The art of persuasion. Right. So the first step is to trap your princess. Mm -hmm. Physically trap her in a room. The second step is to insult your princess. Mm Mm-hmm. Because a woman with low self-esteem is more likely to get with you. Yeah. Great. And the third step is brag. Brag about something ridiculous that you've done, which releases the hormone in Seisha. Yeah, that makes women ovulate. For For sex! sex. (laughs) So, right away, Dr. Yap 
insults Gail when he meets her. He says, I didn't know that Linda had a semi-attractive sister. Mm-hmm. So right there, that's that's negging. Yeah, that's negging. And if you haven't... If you haven't heard the term... Yeah. If you haven't heard the term negging before, it just means a negative compliment. So it's kind of like a backhanded thing to say to a woman to sort of compliment them, but also, but also throw insult them. An insult. Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. If you see a guy doing it, I don't know, throw a drink in his face. Or just, Preferably one of... No, uh, point it out to him and laugh at him. Be like, oh, I see you're negging that girl. Good luck, bro. That really seems to work. Yeah, and if that doesn't work, then pour a Jean or Louise concoction on his face. You can't fight these people with violence. You it's have not to point violence, out their flaws it's grossness. so they realize what you're they're doing You're gross, wrong. I'm going to throw gross stuff on you. <laughs> <laughs> so throughout the episode, we see Dr. Yap do these three steps. Yeah, we do. And this is the first moment where he does it. Mm-hmm. And he's got her trapped in his workplace, kind of. Yep. It sort of works, it sort of works. Kind of, yep. Yeah. Um, so Bob and Gail are disgusting. Did you so notice, gross. going back, did you notice Dr. Yap checking out Gail's butt as she walked by? No, I did not. Yes, as soon as she walks by and to pick up Bob in the, the recovery room, he's watching her and then he looks down right at her butt. Oh, uh, good job, animators. Yep. We already knew that Tina had a crush on Dr. Yap. We learned this from episode eight, Art Crawl. Mm-hmm. And she, Tina drew Dr. Yap naked. Yes, she did. And Bob was concerned that Dr. Yap had been naked with her. Yep. But no, Tina just has a crush and is really inappropriate. <laughs> and now we finally meet Dr. Yap. Yeah. So, it's great. It's really creepy that Gail just assumes that Bob is her boyfriend now. She's like, well, now you're my boyfriend. No, that's, that's not, not how this how works. works. That's not how any of this works. Oh, goodness. Bob is so moist. His Ugh. his kisses, his drug-induced kisses are so sloppy and way too much tongue. He uses and, so much tongue. Ugh, he's basically licking her face. Yeah, if he was like Janet from The Good Place, he'd be asking, do I need more tongues? Yeah, exactly. And I love that Gail is grossed out. Like, she's almost, it, she looks visibly grossed out to me. Like, she looks uncomfortable. Does she? I think she does. I feel like she's into it, though. Maybe she's just into the attention, not actually the physical act. Yeah. But feeling like she's desired by someone who desires Linda. Well, she says, I guess we could go around the block again. Yeah, she's not super enthusiastic until yeah. later in the episode. Yeah. I love that Bob tells Linda right away, though. Yes, I do like that. We don't play on this whole secret angle, like Linda finding out, thinking they're having an affair. Which is the direction I assumed that they were going to go. Yeah, it's obvious. In this episode, so. I'm glad yeah. they didn't, and I'm glad Bob is honest with Linda. He just tells her right away. Yeah, and then we get another little surprise when Linda just insists that he should continue Go this. along with it. I know! What in the world? I cannot imagine this situation Linda at all. annoys me this episode. She annoys me too. <laughs> it's super mean to do that. Yep. If you asked me to pretend to date one of your lonely friends or something... Well, it's different because it's her sister. It's still weird, and your sister is being a straight-up butthead, so maybe you should talk to her about that. Yeah. Because that's not cool. Your sister thinks that she's stealing your husband and is real happy about it. Yeah. And not Linda, a good sister. Exactly. And Linda thinks that this will all be over soon because she just needs the confidence to find somebody else. But that's a problem. Mm-hmm. And she shouldn't be getting all of her confidence from men. And the intention of men. I know it's a thing. Like, obviously, we want attention from whatever gender we're attracted to. You want to feel desired. Yeah, you want to feel desired, but come on, woman. Like, <laughs> no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. All right, let's continue. Dr. Yap invites Bob and his family to his cabin in the mountains. Bob agrees, hoping that Gail will fall for Dr. Yap. He soon discovers that plan isn't working like he'd hoped. Dr. Yap uses the Prince of Persuasion methods to try and win over Gail, while Tina uses those moves to hit on her dentist. Oh, Tina. Oh, Tina. I really like the lyrics that they put on the screen when Dr. Yap is singing in the mm -hmm. dentist's office. That's a cute touch. Yeah. Yeah. In case people 
couldn't understand it. Yeah, but it I don't know. There's something about it. It feels like karaoke, which is cool. Mm. I like it. I almost wish that they would do that during all of their songs. Yeah, that would be nice. That would just be fun. a lot of their songs are very clever, and they've got great lyrics. And if you're not paying attention, you could miss half the fun of their musical direction. Mm-hmm. And they're fun to sing along to. They're so catchy. Mm-hmm. Do you like Gail's rendition of One Way or Another? Oh, my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> so gross. Everything she does just makes me want to gag in this episode. It's really off-putting. Which is perfect, because it's exactly how it's supposed to be. They're they're doing their job. But her dipping that pickle... <laughs> she dips a pickle, what, in a coffee or something? Yes, in coffee. <laughs> so gross. And also, is this a thing from when you worked in fast food, did you guys cut your own pickles? Because Bob is standing there cutting pickles while mm-hmm. she comes over and reaches for one, right? Yeah. Did you guys cut your own pickles? No. Uh, I worked at A&W, and... We got our pickles in bags. So, I mean, they were great. Were they like Double Meat Palace pickles where they're dehydrated? No. They're swimming in their juices. Ugh, gross pickles. It's Pickles are delicious. Pickles are disgusting. And W pickles are amazing. (laughs) But they give you the bags of pickles full Mm -hmm. of pickle brine and whatever. Yeah. So we drain out the pickle juice, most of it, Mm -hmm. and then just dump them in little containers. But they come pre-cut. Okay. Well, Bob does his own stuff, I guess. Yep. I'm assuming that Bob does this prep every day, though. Yeah. Just like he would do for everything else. The lettuce, the onions, tomatoes. Do you think he buys his pickles just at a grocery store? No, it looked like a really big bucket of pickles. Jar of pickles. So maybe he brines his own cucumbers? Ugh, gross. Uh, Cucumbers are so good, and then you get pickles. Pickles are so much better. So good. (laughs) So you get a great montage of the kids doing more. We missed talking about the montage in the last part, but the kids are trying new contests to mm-hmm. win the jawbreaker. One of them included squirting lemon juice in their eyes. Yeah, that just seems really unsafe. <laughs> it's extremely unsafe, and that's like a form of torture. Oh, horrible. It's a little too far. Yeah, it's a little bit far, but it just shows you how... I think at this point, Louise doesn't care as much about the jawbreaker as she does about winning. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Louise likes to win. Mm Mm-hmm. Gene cares about the jawbreaker. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) For sure. I don't think he's that proud. Now, back to Dr. Yap. Did you notice that one point when he's referring to Gail, he says, you mean the amateur brunette mature? I'm pretty sure that's a search for porn. Amateur brunette mature. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> wow yep i definitely didn't catch that yeah i noticed that when i was just re-watching right before we started and i was kind of shocked it's not it's nothing that they they highlight in the episode it's very much glossed over but mm. yeah pretty sure that's a search for porn that's clever i it's subtle enough that you wouldn't really think about that and it's working on that same thread of like demeaning women and yeah sexualizing them all the time right yeah dr yap's license plate is great oh i didn't notice what is it it's b-r-n-2 d-r-l-u born to drill you oh my gosh which works in two ways that's perfect different ways yep (laughs) great and dr yap mentioned that he was going to take his hygienist to go skiing but she quit probably because of his demeaning nature yeah, his unwanted advances, for yeah. sure. He probably tried his techniques on her and failed. Miserably. Mm-hmm. Dr. Yap does his second technique right before they start skiing. He's with Gail in the picking out their ski poles and... Equipment. Equipment, yes. Picking yep. out their equipment. And he's trapping her. I can really tell that you are quite the skier. I am an avid <laughs> skier. I am a professional hot dogger. <laughs> what? Oh, I know more about you. I know more than you then. Hot dogging is when you show off. I learned that in Archie. <laughs> what? Yeah, if you're a hot no. dogger, you're a big show off. <laughs> yep. Okay, I'm sorry I don't know 50s slang. <laughs> it might be Harsh like, burn on me, right? It might be like 60s. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, he does his trap your princess technique yeah. with Gale. Yeah. And poor Bob, you really should take the lesson if you don't know how to ski. Because, I mean, if you're going to go on those big downhill skiing... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to start the sentence Slopes. over again. Shush! Okay. Because, ski slope. Because if you're going to go on the slopes, right, and not like a bunny one, then you really need to know how to ski. Mm-hmm. But You can get really seriously injured to give bob some credit he does the right thing he pizzas he does he, he does, does pizza someone instead of French must fry. have told him to do that yes so you put your skis in a triangular position yeah a v a v yep and that slows you down mm-hmm. which is great but it's not going to save you if you're going down a hill that's like 80 degrees angled <laughs> right <laughs> <I'm> like, <"What?" laughs> not temperature yeah <laughs> but yeah like he pizza it instead of french fried you french fry when you should have pizza mm. to quote south park but yeah are you a fan of skiing yeah i've done it a few times and i love it it's a lot of fun mm-hmm. have you ever tried snowboarding yes i did it once and i did not have a lot of fun <laughs> did you fall a lot yep so much that i basically <laughs> sat halfway down the hill and like all right, I'm going to sit here for like half an hour until I get up the courage again to try and go down again. Hmm. It sucked. Yeah, snowboarding is tough. I don't like being having both feet locked in position. I feel trapped. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. I get it. Can't really move with the same amount of freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm a fan of skiing, so this looks like fun to me, mm-hmm. except for the whole grail part. Yeah, Linda's having a blast because mm. she, everything she's not in the middle of all these shenanigans going on. Not until she finds them. Yeah. I was wondering, though, this might be something that you know. Is the song and the skiing montage like a reference to a movie? I was thinking maybe James Bond. So they've sort of got like this little music in the background and the way it's shot feels like potentially a james bond movie where maybe the villain is on skis trying to get to james bond i don't know i don't watch these movies <laughs> i don't know maybe but i was thinking more of typical 70s 80s ski movies oh okay where, yeah. yeah do you have any funny skiing stories no not really um the first time i went snowboarding though the first and only time I went snowboarding. Not that I didn't like it. It's just been a long time since I've hit the slopes. Um, I was on a class trip and a bunch of my friends decided that this time we were going to try snowboarding because every other time we went skiing and we were, we were good at it. Mm-hmm. And so I was with like four other friends and we were all on the bunny hill all day, except about halfway through the day, they got too frustrated that they didn't know how to snowboard as well as ski. So they all ditched their snowboards and went and got skis. But I'm like Louise, and I want to win, and I want to do it well. Determined. I was determined to do it properly. So I kept doing it all day long, and I fell so many dang times. And, like, did, like, flips kind of falling. Like, it was (laughs) bad, but I just kept going because I figured I've committed to this, and it's going to happen now. Right. Yeah. Stubborn. I am. I am quite stubborn. And? <laughs> and by the end of the day, I can make it down a couple of times without falling. Um, definitely almost hit people a few times, but... They got in your way. Yeah, exactly. You should have moved when I was screaming at you to do so. Exactly. <laughs> Just like you, I was on a class trip, and I was pretty confident in my skiing abilities. I could get on the ski lift, no problem. That's good. That's a hard part to learn. That thing can come around the corner pretty quickly and, like, scoop you off your feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was going down the hills just fine. Great confidence. Going fast. It's a lot of fun. And then I learned about another type of ski lift. The T-bar. Yeah, that's what we had for the bunny hill. They gave you a T-bar for the bunny hill? Yeah. Jeez, that's terrifying. That's a calabogie. Didn't you guys go there? No. No? Okay. So I never knew about the T-bars and nobody showed us how to use them. So (laughs) 
I'm standing there. I'm watching the person in front of me get on. I'm like, okay, I can figure this out. I get on. I'm standing there. The thing scoops me up, but I'm not balanced properly. And <laughs> I slide off. <laughs> so I slide off. No problem. We're not even up. At, we're not up high at all at this point. Yeah. But my jacket, my coat gets caught on the bottom part of the T because it's an upside down T. That's why it's a T bar. Um, but my jacket gets caught in the bottom and right where the zipper is and it rips all the way up my jacket oh right in half completely ripped my jacket in oh, half no. the zipper's like dangling out of nowhere i've got no jacket anymore and <laughs> it's like the first hour of our ski trip oh no oh yeah so the rest of the day i had a broken jacket oh i still it's very i still ski it was very unfortunate but I was laughing stock for the whole day and <laughs> the rest of the week and the rest of the month because Aww. I still wore the jacket <laughs> because it was my only winter jacket. Right. Okay. So, yeah. It's good times. How old were you? I don't know, like 10, 12. Mm. Okay. Bob breaks a tooth on the kid's jawbreaker. Dr. Yap and Linda catch Bob and Gail in a compromising position. Back at the cabin, Dr. Yap pulls Bob's tooth, and Linda pretends to be in love with Dr. Yap so that Gail can steal him. Mm. Oh, boy. Could you guys hear that eye roll? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was pretty Mm. well pronounced. (laughs) Mm. So the end of the episode went in a different direction than I thought it was going to go when I watched it the first few times. Oh, yeah? First time. And then the second time when I watched it, I thought I remembered it wrong, and I thought it was going to happen again. (laughs) okay so when the kids are building their snowmen and we see louise's with the jawbreaker in the parrot's mouth Mm -hmm. i was sure that bob was gonna run into it choke on the jawbreaker and gail was gonna try and give him mouth to mouth and then linda would come in and see her like making out with him and him like sputtering and flailing and yeah that's how i thought it was gonna happen Mm, okay but he just breaks his tooth and then we get a freaking nightmare when Dr. Yap decides to pull it out with, with hilariously no drugs. sized pliers. Yeah. Those are like <laughs> pliers for, I don't know, a transformer. Okay. <laughs> They're huge. They're ridiculous. Way big. too big. Yeah. Uh huh. And this is where I really don't like Linda in this episode because she gets angry when she sees Bob in this position, which I kind of get like. You know, the idea of something versus actually seeing it can be different. Linda tells Bob it's okay for him to have sex with Gail. I know, and she actually kind of encourages it, which is not cool. No, it's not cool, Linda. Especially because Bob is not into this. No. Like, seriously, if you switch the genders here and it was Bob's brother chasing after Linda, all of us would be creeped out. We should be equally creeped out by this. It's gross and (laughs) not okay. Bob is so uncomfortable. Yeah. And he wants none of this. And then Gail keeps pushing herself on him. It's really wrong. Gail, no. No. I really want to take, like, a rolled up newspaper and just smack her on the face. Swatter. Yes. One of the spray bottles for her cats. Exactly. No, Gail. No. Yeah. Yeah. Although, as much as I hate Linda's attitude in this episode... I laugh basically every time she calls Bob a hurtful slut. (laughs) Because it's just, I don't know, it's just funny. Yeah. It's terrible. He's not a slut. (laughs) I don't know, it's just, yeah. (laughs) She slaps him twice. Yeah. With the chipped tooth. Very rude. Yep. I don't know. She says it all worked out, and obviously it didn't. Well, Well, it it worked out for her, but Bob is still annoyed and mad. Mm Mm-hmm. She's just choosing to see the results instead of the whole situation. Yeah, and how it affected her husband. Yeah. It made him... So does the end justify the means? No. 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 Linda, you should be listening to our Fork and Bullshirt podcast. Yeah, because uh, your morality is out of whack. Mm-hmm. Man, that's like a 90s reference, isn't it? <laughs> don't diggity dog do that, Linda. <laughs> I don't know. I do love this credit sequence, though. It's probably one of my favorites. the credit sequence is really, really good. It's just so many things that this Prince of Persuasia says that make no sense. So whenever this comes on 
in the car or like when I'm listening to it on my phone or on my computer. Yeah, the, the Bob's uh... Burgers music album. Um, there's this whole moment of the Prince of Persuasia comes up, and it's just great to listen to all the ridiculous things that he says. Mm-hmm. And my favorite, and your favorite, mm-hmm. <laughs> be the tallest guy in the bar. And brag about how long your butt crack is. <laughs> what? Brag about how long your butt crack is. Oh, it's perfect. And mm. then it makes absolutely no sense. No sense. None. It's just be the tallest guy in the bar. Just if you're not, you better leave the bar. Yeah. Find a bar with a lot of very short men. Mm-hmm. If you're not very tall. <laughs> so, overall? Overall... As much as this episode infuriates me <laughs> with all of the uh, Prince of Persuasia stuff and the Gail and Bob. That's what makes it so good. Yeah, that's also what makes it so good because it's just so heightened that you can't take it seriously. Like, mm-hmm. it's completely ridiculous that Linda would tell Bob to keep going with this charade, right? Yeah. And then it's completely ridiculous For there to be videotapes and, like, classes of a guy called the Prince of Persuasia. So, (laughs) And what is he wearing? Like, what's his outfit? It's like the pirate thing from uh, the pirate shirt. Yeah. From Seinfeld. It's like the puffy shirt. Yeah. No. It's terrible. In every way. And he's terrible in every way. But it's so exaggerated that it's funny. Yeah. You know? Agreed. Um, There's one reference that I want to bring up at the very end. The kids want to do one more contest. Mm -hmm. Um, The first one to catch a squirrel. And Jean brings back the stuffed squirrel. And Louise says... I thought it was just dead. Sure. But I'm assuming it's stuffed because they're in, like, a cabin. They're probably, like, stuffed. I guess. Huh. I just assumed he went and got it outside and it was dead. Okay. That works, too. winter. Either way. Uh, Louise says, that doesn't count. It's dead. And Jean says, it's not dead. It's sleeping. (laughs) <laughs> and that was, uh, for me, that reminds me of Monty Python's Dead Parrot sketch. Oh. One of their most famous sketches where uh, right at the start, it's the guy saying, this parrot isn't, like, this parrot's dead. And the shop keeps saying, it's not dead, it's resting. <laughs> it's resting. He's pining for the fjords. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right, so shall we get to our burgers? Sure, let's get to our burgers of the week. Okay. Well, before we do that, I want to... We have a couple of iTunes reviews that we received, and we are going to give them burgers Mm -hmm. for the reviewers. So, our first burger... So, our first burger is for Nathan, who's a host over on the Lost Watch podcast, which is excellent, and you should definitely check it out if you're a fan of Lost. So, I know Nathan personally, and he likes to philosophize... (laughs) 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 and so his burger is the roast modernism burger oh wow okay yeah so it would come with roast beef red cabbage curly kale melted ale and mustard cheddar carrot piccalilli 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 i think think it's (laughs) piccalilli okay carrot piccalilli and horseradish sour cream with roast potatoes and red wine gravy on the side okay that is way too complicated no, 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 but it's like a fancy burger. It's like it's like a roast dinner, yeah. you know, but on a burger. It almost sounds like it could be for someone who likes art, postmodernist. So for this particular burger, I found a recipe, so I will put that in the show notes. Nathan's Roast Modernism Burger. Mm-hmm. And then our second burger is for Jean E. And I know that she's very involved in the theater community. So her burger is Exit Sage Right. It's a rosemary sage burger with chive mayo. Another one that I have a recipe for, and I will be putting in the show notes. Nice. Mm-hmm. Exit sage right. Okay. It's cute. Great. Mm. I like that one. Thanks for the <laughs> reviews, guys. Yes, thank you so much. All right, Jason, how many burgers do you have for this week? I have two burgers. Excellent. I do as well. Okay, Mine you go first. mediocre at best. Mediocre! Man, I'm thinking of the... Uh, the Mad Max, Max Curry Road yeah. burger from last week. Yeah. Witness peace. That was so good. Okay. So I'll start. I have the Prince of Persuasion noodles. 
burger, which is oh a ramen God. burger. <laughs> oh, terrible. Yeah. Prince Another of Persuasion. Another ramen burger. Yep. I went okay. there. All right. But I like the name, Prince of Persuasion Noodles. Very cute. <laughs> yeah. Very cute. A little, a little lamb, but... I worked off the same theme. Mm-hmm. And I have the Blintz of Persuasion Burger. Blintz? Yeah, Blintz. What's that? A Blintz is kind of like a crepe. Okay. I think it's a little bit thicker and usually smaller. Um, so it would be a burger inside a Blintz. Okay. Mm-hmm. It could be good. I yeah. couldn't find any <laughs> recipes online, but it could be good. It could be good. If a burger can be good inside of a crepe, then it can be fine sure. inside of a blint. And I mean, if you can make a burger out of ramen noodles, then... You can make burgers out of anything. Yep. Which makes our job easier. <laughs> All right, what's your second burger? My next burger is the Forbidden Fruit. Oh my god. Yeah. No! It's, it's, got, it's got apple slices and made with apple smoked bacon. Oh, yeah, okay. it's uh, it looks really good. I've got a recipe for it, and I'll put it in the notes. Okay, it's not it, really a it's pun. It's just the but name. It's, it's just the name, the and I'm thinking fruit. of li- I'm I thinking know. of Gale. It's gross. Um, <laughs> it doesn't have a pun, but it still kind of works. Yeah, it's cute. I like it. It's a, it's a good reference for this episode. All right, my second one is playing chard to get. <laughs> it comes with Swiss chard. You should laugh more audibly, Jason. No one thinks that you laugh, or nobody's going to think that you laugh at my burgers. Meanwhile, you're like shaking and shimmying over there. I'm like, oh no, another charred burger. (laughs) I know, it's it's, it's an easy one though. (laughs) All right, so. Playing charred to get. Yeah. Okay, what's your favorite burger? Like, which one's your favorite? I like Forbidden Fruit. Okay. I kind of like playing chart to get, so let's uh, let's rock paper scissors for this bad boy. All right, okay, let's do it. Let's go. Rock paper scissors. Oh, V wins <laughs> again. <laughs> All right, so our burger this week is plain chart to get. Comes with Swiss chart. Sadly, I do not have a actual recipe for that burger. But you it's know okay. what? It's got Swiss chard on. You can reuse it from your last one. Harsh, sir. <laughs> yep. You could just keep reusing your ramen burger. Uh, I you were the one that used ramen. No, 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 no. You were the one that used the ramen burger. What, what was I it? I never made a ramen burger. What was it? What was my ramen burger? I don't remember. But I'm certain that there was one because you showed me a picture and it was weird. It looked it was like because... Chad. No, no, no! I didn't hair. use a ramen burger. I used the one below that on the website that I found, and then I saw the one above it, and I was like, "Oh, they have a ramen burger." Um, and then you were like, "Yeah, I think I've seen that before." Hmm. I've never used a ramen burger. Yeah. Okay, so this is the first ramen burger then. Probably. Maybe. It's like the eighteenth chard burger. <laughs> you best step back. <laughs> Okay, guys, that's the end of Burger of the Week, a Multiverse Radio production. Thank you so much for listening. If you like our show, please leave a rating and a review on iTunes, and then we will come up with a ridiculous burger name for you. And probably be able to find a recipe for it. Yeah? Yeah. Probably. And then you can try making it, and take pictures, and tweet it at us, and tell us whether it's good or not. (laughs) Yeah. Because I don't eat meat, so a lot of these burgers won't work for me. Let Jason know if you should try them. If you have any comments or a party burger name that you want to share, you can find us on Twitter at Multiverse Radio or Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. And as always, you can visit us on our website, multiverseradio.ca. Yeah, that's CA because we're in Canada. And we will see you next week for our review of Season 2, Episode 7, Moody Foodie. Moody Foodie. Moody Foodie. Ooh, we got... Our first on-screen wet willy. Ugh. Yeah, if you thought Bob's <laughs> sloppy kiss was gross, you got something coming to you next week. I don't know. I think they're on, like, equal planes of gross no, in my mind. No, wet willy. Oh, grosser. <laughs> All right, bye, guys. Bye.